sweetness to what you were doing, to what you gave me last time. No. We're going to uh, interrupt this coffee conversation. We're walking? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. Sit down. We've already, we're rolling. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're having a top secret coffee we're, conversation. I, I wanted to catch some of that top secret coffee talk before. Oh, I know. It's, it's all, now it's for everybody here. So we're here. Thank you for joining our ad campaign, doing the shoot. Jared, first question for you guys is, when did you first meet? I just want to know. We're, we're getting right into it. Right into it, starting oh, right now, Jared. Jeez. Roll. Well, okay, we, I, how did you I, meet I, So we first started talking, because I started using your cameras on, on a Tarzan movie for Warner Brothers. And there was all sorts of shit going on with the cameras. Oh. And you were very responsive. And Absolutely. great customer service. This is the dragon. That Tarzan right? movie. Yeah. But I had to sign a I had to sign a wave uh, uh, warranty to Warner Brothers. I mean what the fuck they thought they were doing, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> that was because of Superman. It wasn't because of us. Okay. I had to oh, sign a warranty again. to okay. say this would work. Yeah. Now, what, if it hadn't worked, I've no idea what they were going to do, but it was it was a it was a charade, the whole thing. Your, your leap of faith, because remember Aces too. Remember yes. Aces yeah. was at that time, and Aces yeah. was broken. It was so broken. It was the worst thing you could do to your movie. So I remember we were doing everything. You took a. We had Graham, who's the smartest guy on the planet, he is. fly in, meet Warner Brothers, who. Warner Brothers had a bunch of bad experiences with digital and the Superman movie. I don't know if you remember all that, but it was horrific. But MPI at Warner Brothers, their motion picture kind of science division, were the first ones really to adopt us. So they kind of, you know, they were giving everybody the like, this better work. But MPI was like, we got to do this. And ACES was a mandate. And we were like, yeah, hey, Aces like is broken. And it was the most screwed up thing because I was actually here. I was getting calls from DPs saying uh, they're forcing me to shoot Aces, not even DP shooting red, but they're, and it looks horrible. But the person telling me to shoot Aces is blah, blah, blah at Oscars.org. I'm not going to tell them no. So I'm like, well, it's we're going to fix this. And, and Henry's the <laughs> Henry's fucking the rock star. We're going to sign off. And Nick Corda. That's it. Nick That's Corda it. was part of that whole thing. He's producer. He's like the Batman, Rambo. And so he was on, on the side of. He, he was on the good. back thing, but he pushed, but he I, pushed I, us. He gave us the like yeah. Reds. Go Somehow we gave enough confidence. Because that, I, 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 yeah. I was shooting a movie that was supposed to be in a jungle and I didn't run all this big film stuff. So I got your guys in London, met up with them and they put this little little thing on the table. I thought, that's it. That's what we want, is a little thing. Now it seems huge compared to what... No, but it, that, was, that was the breakthrough. It's this little box. And that's, that's, where I, that's how it started. Then when um, I was doing the second Guardians movie and Marvel said they wanted to shoot it on the Ari 65, which is a great oh. big lump. And I'd spent a lot of time talking to James about what the movie was. And I thought this is, these two things are opposite. There's the visual idea for the movie and there's this great big lump that was like out of the 1950s, like a three strip Technicolor camera. Yeah. We're never going to shoot the movie on that. So I trotted to, down to you and... Yep. You leant onto the table and said, well, how about this? Yeah. But it was still in prototype form. And was that, did, was that, did Stable Eye come along at that time or was that before Stable Eye? Well, Stable Eye had... I know that was Maleficent you had, Stable Eye. No, we developed that in 19, 2014. And, and Dave so that was had developed it for something else. And I told him not to waste his time with that, and I got a better way of using it. <laughs> and that's how it started. But it only could exist because you had the, these small cameras. Yeah, that was a breakthrough. That yeah. was a... So it's, it, it, you know, you can take, make, everybody will invent ways to use stuff. But I can't emphasize enough, the physical size of this thing is... Where, have you got a little camera? Where's yeah, that where's one? I got the X. X. Yeah, does somebody pass that over a second? The physical size of this thing is like going back in history. There it is. There you go. That's great. 
So Buster Keaton was making movies on cameras only a little bit bigger yep. than this. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And oh. you look at what he was doing, huh. and they were every bit as inventive as we think we yeah. are now, probably more so. And they're on the back of motorbikes doing this. Yeah. They're on, I mean, there's, you name it, they're yeah. doing it. Because the camera's this too. size. Tons I mean, yeah. genius action. Yeah. And then, you know, as you know, the sound and color and made the cameras this size. Yep. And All that, the gack around them. And that set the tone of the way everybody thinks a movie had to be made. So you couldn't go and make, we're in New York, so you couldn't go and make um, Taxi Driver or French Connection or any of those movies until you had a smaller camera. So Eastman Color, when was Eastman Color? 60s? Yeah. So late, late 60s, Eastman Color became a kind of a, a stable color system that you could release big movies on. So that enabled the New York independent movies movement and all the rest of it because the camera technology came down. I shot one of the first digital movies in 2005 on a Panavision Genesis camera. Yeah. <laughs> just well, you know, it was big. Yeah. It was big. Mostly I did it because it, I had an awful lot of flying down. to do. Yeah. And I had done that for a living and I knew that I'd have six aeroplanes in the air. One would be running out of gas. The other one yeah. would have engine trouble. Flyboard. The sun yeah. was setting and I'd had 10 feet of film left in the camera and it was just never going to happen. Yeah. Or you needed years to do it. Like, you know, The Battle of Britain was a great example of a movie that literally took years to make yep, yep, yep. in the air. So I thought, I need something which has rolls for longer. And that was a pretty good camera, you know, and we put it up. Yeah. I shot some tests. I put it up in the Odeon Leicester Square, which is a 60 foot, that's, you know, big theater. Yeah. yeah. We thought- It's a good test. We thought, this works. And Dean Devlin was a producer at the time, and he, he's a brave guy, and he's, okay, yeah. I'm going to be one of the first. But, and that's all fine, well and fine. They made small differences. And we've all messed around with lenses and film stocks. And your average viewer in the theatre can't tell the difference between any of it. But the moment you make the camera this size, you can think totally differently about how you make your movie. So you can, you and I could just go and shoot a movie like this, or we can invent all sorts of other ways to do it. But it, it doesn't happen until it's this size. So that, to me, is one of the most significant moments in cinema history is that you can bank all that technology and this is an IMAX camera. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so think think of what an IMAX camera was. It's a great big thing that oh. you know to hand hold it you'd have to be Superman. But to be you know and you you're coming even with the 235 for example. I mean it was still a small camera. But you couldn't but, the footprint of it was still I know, big. But still you didn't have to excuse what went up on the screen. The problem with a lot of digital when it came, first came out, and 1080p, for example, it even took a while to get to 1080p, but you know, 720 with the very cam. You have to be careful when you're going up to a 60 foot screen, there was compromises, you know, you have to do that. But with the two, th at least shooting 35 millimeter film, which has kind of had such a I, I, history. I think that's because people got confused about the exposure range. Yeah. So, yeah. If you had a new film stock, the first thing you did was, yeah, it said it was this on the tin, but that was meaningless. You had to check out exactly what, where the native ISO rating really was. Yeah. And then you really had to work out what your exposure range was. Which people forgot to do with digital. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so. Oh. <laughs> I mean, everybody, it's still really? to no, this no, day. No, no, it's still oh, to this yeah, day. Still that's to this why, day. That's, yes. I promise you, I'm not going to talk about the consequences of that because it, it upset a lot of people, but. In, in film, the grey point, if you, Ansel Adams in the 1930s, invented this really, really simple system, which could mean that you empowered as a photographer, you empowered what you had in your head and you can translate it onto a, a piece of negative. And he called it the zone system. It's such a simple system. Do you use that in our camera? We have that, you know. Do you? I just yeah. use it. The geoscope is Giovanni Rabisi. <laughs> See, I don't know anything. I'm a technical incompetent. Took, I know, but he took <laughs> the Ansel <laughs> Adams, the See, zone I mean, system, and that's what we put in the camera. Okay, so you we'll get tell Dan about that because he, yeah. he's the only one who understands. But you're the right, <laughs> and that's why we put that tool. You're absolutely right because okay. people. Who's got my light meter? There we go. So 
great. Great. That's that's, handy. that's what I use. That was it's so funny because like I, have I went and visited you, visited you on the last Guardians. That was before COVID, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Margot Robbie and you were like so grace. Were you like here, meet all the actors and stuff? And then you put this in my hand, and I forgot about all the like people I was supposed to meet, and I'm you know going around. <laughs> There's not a lot of people. You don't see that's that very cool. often. Yeah, but that's that's what that's your number one tool yeah. in translating. With those early digital cameras, grey was two stops off white. Okay. And so everyone would say, "Oh, these digital cameras are they're they're uh, bad on skin tones." They weren't bad on skin tones. They were very good on skin tones. It's just you had to know how to expose them, and therefore the lack of understanding about exposure led to all sorts of mess ups and probably yeah. gave you guys a lot of pain. Oh, it was horrible. Royal. But, but you, it's still like that. It right. really still is like people still don't do bit. those So the those first tests. the first thing I would say to anybody who wants to get into photography is draw so you see what you see what you're looking at and go and buy those Ansel Adams wrote three books. The camera and the negative and the print. Just buy the negative. And there's one chapter in about the zone system, and then you're set up. The rest of it you can work out, or you can go and meet brilliant people like you and ask them to do stuff, or or use geoscope on the camera that shows you what the zone <laughs> the zone system is. Thank you. That's w way too complicated. Thank you where, very much. Where is the geoscope on the camera? It's in the Dermot, view thing. We'll, where is it? Yeah, uh, we'll, do you know how to set that up? We'll show you. Just geoscope. turn it on and flip your turn it on and flip your monitor. That's great. I love it. No, but it's well, such I can't a, tell you, it's I can't tell you a, how many of these I chew through. You know, it's why I put the uh, those the bookends. What do we call them? The traffic light. You know, the traffic, traffic lights. lights. I tell you, yeah. but then you have the kind of things, and there's no numbers attached to that. But you know, kind of, where you know, are breaking. the left and the right, and then you find out where the middle is. Okay. But people ask, what's the ISO? You know, people always ask, what's the native ISO? And yeah, it's all like, the time. But you have to work it out for yourself. You have to. Uh, that's what I said. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sure, we'll yeah. tell you 800, but... But you're you like know, a car a salesman. Thing. You're saying, my car does 1,000 miles to the gallon. <laughs> or my electric... <laughs> not a car. <laughs> you but, are. But that's your opinion of what the ISO but my, is. No, that's, that's not so my, my opinion, though. Because my opinion is you ha I tell every single person, you have to test it out yourself. It's with everything with our yeah. camera. Yeah. It's like, but it was always how many way. stops of dynamic range do you have? I'm like, Jesus Christ, you look at a even a xylet chart, which is kind of scientific, not really. You tell me if there's you can see stuff in but the it's, chat. But it's the simplest process. Well, you should, you should just put up a thing on your website on how to do it. It's the simplest cool. process. Anyway, going I back agree. to how we met. I agree, I thought these guys yeah. are serious people because they take an interest in what we're all saying. And I'm just some schmuck who was, you know, complaining about the camera and you've got a million other things to do. But you were fantastic. And then when you we started doing the, um, the first 8K camera, yeah. Yeah. you know, the, we did a lot of work with Graham and yeah. all the... To, and that was great. You know, you've got other things to do, but that was five, six you months don't of really. Work. <laughs> oh, really? But what, okay. what did what did y'all do with Graham? <laughs> Making <actually>? coffee. <laughs> yeah. Don't start talking about coffee. So, yeah, no. Well, Graham was working on the color science, and yeah. okay. the color team I worked with was, you know, we were all working together to to try and make something great. And I think. Fixed ace. You know that Tarzan movie? It's such a like, a lot of people will think that's an insignificant movie, but man, did that movie help not just us, not just you, not just us, but it, that aces all of a sudden became fixed. Yeah. Warner Brothers yeah. championed that. Yeah. It was from the your standard. work, from our work, but I from, think, yeah, from a lot of the stuff. It went from, because they were trying to bottle, you know, the problem with aces is they wanted it to cover all cameras. and almost all cameras was a very narrow scope of where we have to fit in the box. Mm. And we, of course, you know, are way out here if you want it, if you want it to be. Um, so it kind of redefined ACES into something that was inclusive to everybody, not just us. Yeah. And, and we couldn't have done that without that big movie because it's Tarzan. Yeah, which everybody knows but, what Tarzan is, the but the legend. But it, you're... but it doesn't. You don't think of it like that. I mean, you don't. But you you have to think. 
you have to have, be inde independently minded in whatever you do. So the fact that this stuff exists doesn't, it may not exist in the right form. And it's, um, you know, you have to question it and you have to think, well, if it's not working, then I can't use it or it has to be fixed. The idea may be a great idea. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. therefore you have to fix it. You don't keep driving a car that's leaking oil all the time. You think, oh, I'm going to get it fixed. Yeah. So you go to find somebody who can fix it for but you. But you like the people who will drive the car for you. But you a need them. Times. You need the driver. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Like we can have all the ideas in the world and make this and make that. And yeah, we always when we make stuff, it's usually a little bit janky. But we need people like you that say, hey, I'll take a chance. Like, hey, I'll sure. No, pain in I, the ass. I can squint enough to see. That's not a pain in the no. ass. I mean, I love it. Dude, we, we would be so uneventful if it wasn't for people like you. Emails and phone and calls. Gonna, <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Between you and Nick, and I got to give Nick a lot of credit because Nick is, you've worked with Nick a few times. And we he's done four or five pictures. He, and he's. Five pictures. Five pictures. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's such a like, he's such a professional, but unprofessional. It's a weird combination, but he pushes us too. He'll, you'll push us, he'll push us. And it's a, this great combination because Nick was a director that became a producer, which doesn't happen Got very it. often yeah, that at is all. Unusual. It's very rare. And I don't know what your work, work in relationship with him. I assume it's good if you did six No, no, he's, he's excellent because he, he's very, um, he's, great at understanding what's important and what's not important yeah. so and he's not influenced no. i don't he'll he'll take the opinions of the people that matter like you and he'll take that upon his shoulders and he'll he'll ride yes, he will. ride through yeah. the entire process um and he'll fall with it or rise with it and that's i have a lot of respect that's you know if nick calls i'll pick up the phone just like when you call, because you need those people to have faith in the process. And that's why, because we we want to make good stuff, of course, but we yeah, can't but do it without yeah, your the, guys's the movie, the movie objections. Industry, the movie industry is is full of people. That we all got into movies because we like making stuff. Yeah. We don't like making the same thing. And the point about movies is they're all different. So, and your approach to making them needs to be different each time. So that sometimes means thinking, okay, this is the idea. Is this is this thing or that thing yeah. going to service the idea? So it's great to have people who, who, are, who are interested in ideas and interested in making stuff. Do you feel like now that you really know the size of the, the different cameras, it's not this brand new thing, when you're reading a script, can you kind of break it down, knowing exactly what you what you can capture yeah. in, in I a mean, scene, now I would say, based on what you know about the mobility of it? Yeah, I would say now th this has opened up an entirely new world. So everyone will have their own way of of inventing stuff around it. I have a system work with David Freeth at, at Stabilize, specifically on my and his solution to my. Huh working, you know, so we have this proprietary thing. And it's a very expressive method of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. oh. I wouldn't recommend it to everybody. I and mean, it's something I do because it's totally instinctual to me. And, um, but he could do that because he got something of a mass that would work. It's a physicality. It's totally physical. I shoot all my movies now 100% handheld. Wow. But you wouldn't know that. No. And you're, and that's what was no, cool wow. was you're, you were inclusive in that process because you're developing that and, you know, you were developing the way you use our cameras as well in color science and everything. You were kind of tuning that. You were herding cats again. I'm going to say it, but um, trying to get us to 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 follow your vision getting them and then you put us together for a moment and you'd bring like I'd fly out to London and you know meet with the stable eye guys and you're like we want to do this and we want to do that and that's the thing is you just want you have a vision that you want to make your thing and you're you working with people and and putting them together to think, realize that vision I think and that's what people, I love I think I most people it occurred to me the other day that Stanley Kubrick was 
was born at exactly the wrong time. Yeah. Because oh, he was yeah. he was of that thinking of he would he was always desperate trying to make things you know, so famously there were the lenses from um Of course. Uh what was it? Um What were the low light lenses? Just um, Dermot, what were the low light Dermot. lenses made for uh, Kubrick. Kubrick? What was the low Kubrick's low light lenses? Yeah, but Barry, Barry Lyndon. Barry Lyndon, Barry Lyndon. sorry. Yeah. yeah. Barry Lyndon. So, you know, that was famous little candlelit yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. But Kubrick was a, a great inventor and, it, you know, he was originally a cinematographer and then a director. Then, um, hmm. but he would have, people like him would have just adored this era because yeah. now there's very little you can't do if you're minded to do it. What were the elements that you fought over? What What were the, well, I got to get more of this, but if you get more of this, I can't, you, have, you get less of that. When you're, when you're fighting about or trying to come to terms with. It's funny because it's very much, he's very unique because um, it's the mechanics of it too. Oh. It's the, it's almost like a choreograph of how you use the cam. Seriously, it's like you're, that's so, it's it's not the right word, but it's like you're dancing with the camera and you want it to move. Of course, there's the color and everything that you need, and hopefully that you know, and Graham, of course, um, helps that. But it's the combination of not just the size, but how you move with the camera that so the ca is very unique to you. There's very few that you know. It's weird because a lot of directors think like that. A lot of do. Like Fincher thinks like that a lot too, right. like moving like stabilization the camera. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and a lot of like the stable eye, he, when you invented that, the way to work kind of with that system, about a year after that, after I saw you do that first, he had this same kind of epiphany of moving that same thing. And it's a very director's eye of translating the way you want the picture to be from the way you move the camera. And, and the way it's yeah. watched in the theater. Absolutely. Yeah, because it, it, filmmaking has always been restricted by, by, you know, if you've got a whacking great big camera, the, you know, the size of that table over there, <laughs> there's only certain ways you can move and mount that thing. And that dictates how you make a movie. So you look at movies in the 30s and 40s, you know, the, the film stock was 25 ASA, so you have to shoot on a soundstage because you can control Just the light. Tons of lights. Or a really sunny back lot. Yep, 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 yep. And, you know, you've got this lump of mass to move it. So you look at a, a, a Bus Busby Barclay movie, that was a feat of engineering how they did that. Hmm. I once watched a documentary with the wonderful, the RKO stuff, and oh, they, yeah. they yeah. cut yeah, to yeah. this guy and they showed this amazing Busby Barclay stuff, and you look at the logistics of how that was. That was a feat of mechanical engineering, yeah. I would say. And then they cut to this guy and he said, my name is Fred Bloggs and I was a camera operator. And they showed this really sophisticated stuff. And remember this guy is looking at an, you know, not at a parallax viewfinder. So you need, you need to really understand what you're doing. And uh, he said, my job was to keep the artists in picture. <laughs> and it was such a beautiful understatement of this artistry, this guy. <laughs> Just like that. Um, but but that leads to such great invention. Like yeah. really, it does. It's yeah. like yeah. you know, it's like the fluid head and Walt Disney filming trains. It's like I need something smooth. Like, these trains go by too fast, and I can't get the train to slow down. Yeah. So how do you solve this problem? Yeah, because a geared head came from yeah. the fact that you had this huge weight. Yep. So you yeah. know that's how you controlled yep. gun placements, all, all those things. That's yeah. all a geared head is. But if you're... Do you use geared heads anymore? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. Cool. But, uh, well, all the remote cameras are always on a geared head. Of course. Head yeah, because yeah, yeah. you can get precision. Whip it in, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And you can be very precise when you, you know what you need to be precise. And yeah. sometimes I'll use a, a, a geared head again. Just wheels? Just for certain types of shots that I want a certain type of expressive move. So it's... How do you decide that? Intuition. Because <laughs> you... You think th this is the feeling I want the audience to have from the way the camera moves in this specific thing. So that's entirely how you mount the camera. You might still use a steady cam for something. It's yeah. not. It's it's a tool. It's a bit like a carpenter saying, "I'm going to use a this type of hammer versus this yeah. type of hammer." Right. So you've got these two, it's like true. Guardians Three, 
you didn't use as much blue screen, right? It seems like so much of what you're doing is in camera. Do you, are you trying to do that as much as possible? Well, in all movies, I mean, blue screen's been... I mean, obviously there's a lot, but, but there's not... But I mean, not... you know, visual effects has been around for centuries. Yeah. You know, painters in the, the Renaissance the were inventing the rules of color in visual effects. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, some of the best smoke and mirrors movies were made in the 50s. Yeah. When, when, when was Citizen Kane made? We were talking about matte paintings the other day. Mm -hmm. and I was of course. That's fucking Orson Henry Welles Bumstead and, and oh, Henry Bumstead would do those beautiful Big Sur. for Hitchcock. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 I remember going into Pyramid in London, going into the, mat, there was the matte painting department. It was yeah. run by father and son, brilliant team. And you'd look through the glass paintings off old movies. God. And you know some huge movies, and you'd look at the original glass paintings, and sometimes it was just the simplest thing. It, it, they just painted in a shaft of light that was put into wow. into a set, or a, you yeah. know some basic set extensions. Obviously, yeah. Citizen Kane has a lot of set extensions. Yeah. Um, but the most interesting ones are just the smallest little details. Yep. Little detail. Yep, 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 yep. Same stuff as we do now. It's just got. But that move. It's interesting because if you read the that movie was great. Guardians of the Galaxy, I cried a little bit. I did too, I told them I cried. <laughs> I didn't cry a little, I cried like tears. It was very but dramatic. But the people, the reviewers, which are just random, you know, reviewers that aren't camera people or anything, you hear about movement. You hear someone mention the movement and they don't understand what they're talking about, but what you're trying to, what you just said, you're trying to express to the viewer, mm -hmm. it's happening and it doesn't matter if it's green screen or not because yeah. And there's a I lot mean, of God, movement God, God, in God, that movie. God, God, uh, James is very, uh, uh, feels strongly about building sets and he builds very large sets. Yeah. And there's a very good reason for that. A, it looks better. B, it's better for the actors to be in there. And he'll do a lot, all, all, any effect he can do practically <laughs> as well, he'll do it that way. And, the, uh, and to photograph it is so much more successful when you have real things. Of course, we'll always use blue screen to and the, something in the distance or all the rest right. of it. But, you know, virtual sets are, I've, I've literally never seen good virtual sets. And yeah. I really haven't. Yeah. That's a problem. Have you, have you tried, I mean, you do like to tinker. What would you change or what, what, what's the thing that's really keeping you from, is it, is it that it's not great for the actors and you really need that emotion from them when you're working in, with in them? In terms of? Virtual production. Like a, well, the, the virtual production is... Like working in a... Oh, in a volume thing? Yeah. Well, the problem, part of the problem is they're not big enough. Okay. So the second problem, and I'm sure they'll get over these things. If you've got lots of cameras in a line, that's great. They're sort of designed... For, they were designed for television initially. Okay. But in my world, you know, this, we whip this thing around all over the place and we then travel all over the place. And yeah. it, the, the frame lag is, is too, too much. Considerable. And the other thing is it's very restrictive in the type of light you can use. So we'll see a lot of movies and TV shows set at magic hour, just yeah. as the sunset, <laughs> yeah. because that's great at that. <laughs> we yeah. get it for 24 hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but you do. The you're... moment you in, in, introduce direct light, it, it's very And the tricky. movement, obviously, and how you interact with, even not what you're standing on, I think is important too. Like I was shocked at Suicide Squad when I visited you guys, those, those sets were insane. And those weren't even, I'm sure, not your biggest ones. It's great but sets. Great sets. I love sets. that movie. But you, you get that feeling too, yeah. you know, that reality. And it's nothing against virtual production, but... Um, well, I think the actors the pick intimacy, up on that. And, and yeah, you it, can it, see it, when things yeah. aren't working. And you, you, you can sort that, you know, I can... I visual. remember the set you came to actually, it was a collapsed... Um, I forget what it was, but, you know, I'd lit that set twice or three times because, you know, I'd go in and look at it and thinking, this isn't working. And that was my original idea. And so you... You know. You, you change it and you can fix it and make it work because you, you, you can, can look at it. you can literally see it. You literally see it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. What about... And I, feel yeah. it. Yeah. There's that feeling well, part of it. Like, I, you I, have to. You just did the roadhouse and the instigators and the instigators is a lot on the streets right it, what, what's the instigators is uh is, is, is set in boston but we shot a lot of it in new york um 
But that is a very fluid, um, it, you know, Doug is a fascinating filmmaker. You know, what, what's, let's put it in, what's fun about being a cinematographer is that you get to work with some great directors and you're there and you build a relationship with them where you're interpreting what they're thinking yeah. and their, their way th their personalities are and putting that on the screen. And those are the interesting movies, where it's, it's somebody's voice clearly on the screen. Whereas, I agree. Yeah. you know, you, the three of us could all quote direct a movie. I mean, I can direct piss into a bucket, but it was... It, Theoretically, it, yeah. yeah. But it, it, it wouldn't be interesting because my skill is collaborating. <laughs> No, it's interesting because I, I, you know, I think it's, different. it's a hard step for a cinematographer to become a director. Because if you're good at cinematography, you're good at collaborating and interpreting somebody's yeah. view of yeah. something. Being a director is you have to be a voice and say, I'm going to, this is the way I want to tell my story. So, you know, That's James Gunn is a, is, is a great director to work with because he's, he's a writer too. Um, and he's a good balance of having a very strong opinion about the way he sees something, but he's good at listening to counter arguments and to, to, to move it forward. And Doug is, is great to work with because he's, he's always exploring. He'll never give up on something and he'll always explore and it won't be necessarily what you think about. Yeah, he shot the first, first theatrical released Red movie, Jumper. Was that? No, well, I mean, he, sh he, he shot swingers himself, he, and he photographed that. Dude, yeah, I know. But talking about like yeah. taking risk, taking you know, seeing, squinting, whatever magic you want to talk about, you know, allowing that through, um, you know, groundbreaking. He was like that was but before. He, 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 you can be shooting a scene together, and you know, spent two three hours shooting on this scene, and you think, well. I have to shoot it from a few different angles and the rest of it. And he's still not there. So he's not afraid of saying, okay, every, all that last three hours work is rubbish. We're gonna start over again. And it's rare that you don't get to a position where the starting over again was, it was a, a the bold decision and B, it was the right decision. And it's yeah. rare people do that. It's rare people it look at their work and say, okay, I can make this better. So to get back to a point, if you're inventing something new, it's always janky. I know that. Absolutely. It's, if it's interesting, it's always janky. And people always criticize it because always. it's different. You know, the human mm. condition is frightened of the new. Yeah. We always reward the, the old, the established, and that, you know, we always think back in the day it was great. In the film industry it was, you know, it wasn't film great. Yeah. Well. Do, you know, I can tell you the number of times <laughs> my, you think you're really proud of a piece of work and it got trashed in the laboratory. Oh. Or the, you know, da 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 da. Yeah. We had 100 years of that and we forget that we rarely lose material now. Rarely. Yeah. yeah. In fact, Absolutely. I, 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 whenever we go, we manage to send it to you and somehow you dig it out of somewhere, God knows how. But it's, you forget the risks of the filmmaking process, how that used to be. Arc lights. People say, you know, there's nothing like the light from a brute. Well, it's not true. Otherwise, we'd be still using them. Yeah. But I remember being in Moscow years ago and doing some night work, and suddenly, a hundred people came out on the streets and all this thick stuff, and that turned the lights on, and they were half the brightness of what we became used yeah. used to. Oh, it's amazing it's going and and film really, it's beautiful. We don't want to. Um, forget how good it was because it gave us something to beat and that's at the beginning that's why the four the 4k wasn't just to be different it's because you want to be at least as good as what you're i, I yeah. think i think people for. i think people love film because they like working within parameters the the scary thing about this is there are no parameters it's a really great way to so put it i can tell you precisely what the the makeup of a particular negative is in a yes. you know I, that's my job is to know that stuff you know I have a 
on a three hundred million dollar picture, <laughs> it's, it's my job to not fuck up. Because it's kind of a mystery. Yeah. Until, it's it's yeah, not it a mystery. No, for for everybody else except for you. Okay. Yeah. But shooting I, film. Even with the taps have gotten better and everything, it is still kind of a mystery what happens. But I the can next help day. you there because I can demystify it. Absolutely. Yeah. And the people I work with and the producers I work with, I want to make sure that they understand whatever we're doing. I'm very open about that. I don't want to mystify anything because the more open yeah. you are, the more confidence people have with staff and all the rest of it. They're in on it. Yeah, but, 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 you but know, of course you should understand it. Yeah. You know, but you'll. Yep. And I don't know, and again, I haven't actually worked on a film set in a while or visited a, f a film yeah. set that's shooting film. They're boring. But you're not striking sets till the next day. I mean, that that still happens. After a uh, hundred years of knowing this shit, people still have this, oh, you, just to be sure that it comes back, to, you know, from the yeah. lab, that we got everything. We got They're leaving sets up. Quite and right. there's an expense and there's a bunch of, you know, a whole other part of the business that makes that expensive. But that doubt, which you don't get um, now with digital, and again, that's your job, is to translate that and push that confidence. But that's why, and I think people like Nick like working with you because you give them that confidence. Nick doesn't question you on your... Well, if yeah, you, do you ability. ever get questions? Yeah, yeah, like, here's the thing. But Warner Brothers will, yeah, you know, but, because that's their, they but, don't know because they're sitting away from the process. So if you, if you go to a doctor and he says, I'm going to operate on you, and you, the, good, the really good doctors will say, I don't like doing this, it's risky, and this is how I'm going to do it. And they can explain a complex process to you yeah. in a simple way. Or do you go to the guy who says, leave it to me, it's all magic. Yeah. This will work. There's no problems at all. I know best. Who are you going to go with? And you're going to be on a podcast later as the victim of. <laughs> yeah, you're going to you're going to, you're going to go to the, the doctor and she says to you, "I'm worried about the you know yeah. these are the things I would be concerned about." Yeah. Who's clear, who's explained to me a layperson? I don't know anything about doctoring. That, but has made me feel that I really understand what the process is. Well, of course, that's where you want to go because life is not simple. Do you think that it's a little easier now, more than five or six years ago, you know, when I mean, we've made a lot of changes, I would say just, and, and cameras in general have made a lot of changes, where is, do you think we're getting to a state where there's so much more confidence? I mean, will we ever be at a state where people say, I'm gonna shoot red or I'm gonna shoot digital and the producers don't say, oh, I don't wanna do 8K. I don't, that's too much data, that's too hard. Like, are we ever going to get to a place where it's just understood that's not... Okay. No, no, because it, 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 nobody would understand, you know... It, <laughs> not the it, answer the, I wanted. Well, here's a, here's a, here's the thing. It, 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 there's no question of this is going to be a red movie or a whatever movie. That, that's a gone, that's when, okay, well, that's I something. don't know, years ago. Good. And quite right, too. That's not the issue. The issue would be some, when you say that's an 8K or a 6K, yeah. some very, very fine filmmakers said, oh, 8K, why would you do 8? Right. Uh, the 8 is actually is not relevant. And you say to a lot of people, 6 or 8, Yeah. well, 8's a bigger number, oh, I want to use 8. But it's not about that. It's not about that at all. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's, for me, it's about... Please. It's about, it's about the geometry of the lenses to the negative size or the chip size. Hmm. And so your Vista Vision is absolutely revolutionary yep. because it's a beautiful format to shoot on. And it means that what I'm interested in is the camera being very present in a scene. And I think that's what makes a massive difference to performances and it makes a massive difference to the audience. If I'm talking to you, or, or I'm talking to you, yeah. the camera's out here, mm -hmm. that's disconnected if the camera's here, but I'm still here, then I'm not. That's connected, and I'm within the scene, and I'm interested in putting the audience within the scene. You can shoot a close-up, can be on a camera way back there, mm -hmm. and that's very impersonal. It's right. still a close-up, but it's on a long lens, or mm -hmm. a close-up. The camera can be here, and that's very intimate, 
and that is an entirely different thing to the camera being over there on the long lens. Right. So I'm, I'm interested in making that camera connect. I can do that now because this thing is this size. It's not as hard on the actors too, probably. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, last night we finished the instigators. I'm, I'm literally shoved the camera in front of Matt Damon, you know, who's, and we're all almost all, you know, interconnected as a group. Wow. A and on the flash, which is, you know, Ezra Miller, who's an utter genius, we literally danced through that whole movie and he's playing two, two characters and we we learned it was like ah. a ballet and we we the relationship we have we with the camera and we, we just he completely wow. understood how to do it and the thing is the actors are not playing to the cameras we used to do for the last hundred years yeah the camera is playing to them hmm. so the reason Vista Vision is such a great format is because I can do that and the bouquet on the lenses and the focus drops off <coughs> beautifully Whereas if I was on a smaller format, everything would be sharp and it would be as ugly as sin. And yeah. your attention wouldn't be going to the actor's face. Yeah. So it's a very, very beautiful way of photographing people. It's the ratio, I think, with Vista Vision too, because I remember, and that's one of the beauties of being able to not care about being janky. You know, we're, we make new stuff. And I remember with the format, yeah. and it was and it was literally just Jim and I were sitting in stage four and looking at geometry of lenses and <laughs> the the circle. And it's like, circle doesn't really matter. It's how the lenses fall in it. And I remember that's draw, just drawing the thing. And it was a ratio that never existed before. We call it Vista Vision, but it's not really Vista Vision, you know, but it was just this weird thing. And having the ability to literally that night send it to the engineers and this is what we want. This is the ratio, this is the pixel, boom, boom, boom. And not knowing, like, we don't know what we're doing, but just having that idea and being able to say, okay, we're going to spend, you know, making wafers, even test wafers is not cheap. Let's take a shot on it. and. I've at least referenced a lot of lenses to make sure that fit in the lens circle. And the beauty of that format is, you know, it it's it goes a little wide, so it fits in full frame lenses, even though we're not using a four three format or whatever, you know, digital still cameras. But there's an emotional aspect to that, even the edge of the lens, and all lenses are different, but to be able to capture that to the edge and the distortion, you know, I'm talking everything you already know, but just to be able to take that chance and get it back and say, yeah. And then there's the process of trying to convince everybody, here's our new format, you know, like, you know, I hope you like it. But, but you know, in, in, <laughs> it's yeah, scary, right. it, yeah. it really is scary. But well, in, people are very vocal in, about in, it. In life, you can have the, you know, you can be very professional. But being professional is, is a barrier sometimes to, I'm not saying being unprofessional, but being <laughs> professional. Well, we're very unprofessional. Wait a well, well <laughs> Come on. that is a barrier to saying, you know, the professionalism yeah, is, yeah. Uh, well, this is how we do it and yeah. da, 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 da. Um, so you say, yeah, but I want to do this. So then the, the, if you arguably the professional response is, well, why would you want to do that? Rather than, oh, that yeah. sounds fun. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. So. Oh, know, I am familiar with your process. That's, that's, how, yeah. that's how we made you. the monochrome, you yeah. know, the monochrome sensor yeah. and all of these weird well, little that's things. that's all the custom that, stuff that you do. And it's not thinking about how many are we going to sell or how are we going to make our money back and, oh, my God, you know, how expensive this is going to be. And don't even think about that stuff. Like, I assume you're not thinking, how am I getting more viewers to watch? You know, you're not worrying about that no. part. And that's the creative aspect of what we all do you know we're all creating just like all these camera guys are there and they're doing their thing they're on the slider and they're making their own little creative decisions yeah. every moment um to have that freedom 
in your position is really hard because you've got a lot of people looking at you. Well, you've got a lot of people risking a lot of money. Absolutely, but, which is fair, but, you know. No, yeah. and that's, it's fair for them to say no. But that's, being respon that's about responsibility as that's opposed to. Where you're, that's where we're different is you're responsible we're not because we aren't. Because well, you are, you yeah. are responsible because you, you, or you take responsibility and that's important. We thing. have to take, that's yeah, we take way. ultimate responsibility. Yeah. That's true. So, and, yeah. but there's, if, if you're going to build something, you can build the same thing over and over in its own movies. You can make the same movie over and over and over again, but everyone gets going to get bored of that. Yes. Yeah. So that's not a good return on investment. Or you can take a risk and do something different yeah. And guess what? Generally, people respond to that. Yeah. Absolutely. If it's, if it's not right now, they'll respond to it next time. And movies have a very long lifetime. Absolutely. And yeah. you get all of this collateral chain, like Tarzan, for example. There was all this other stuff that your decision and how we work together really helped a lot of people out that don't even know us because yeah. we took that risk. And we're like, let's put everything Dead. into this. Was it this. worth the pain? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Was that a painful, what was, do you remember was, like it, what, what the what ask it was? was? We're used, we were used to it because, you know, and again, Warner Brothers, we understood why they were scared. They had, you know, they, and I think it was the, maybe it wasn't the Genesis. I don't know what camera they used on Superman, but it cost a it lot of money because it screwed up. And people forget, you know, again, the film thing, you know, film screws up too, but they had a bad experience. And just like they don't strike sets 100 <laughs> years later until the next day when you're shooting on film, they were just, you know, from 10 years earlier, a little scared, you know, not even scared, just cautious that that wouldn't happen again. And it was a legendary thing, this thing. Yeah, and I think we helped break it. And you helped break it because you're like, yeah, I'll take the risk. I'll sign on, you know, I'll well, sign on the dotted line and take responsibility. <laughs> and so did I, so did we. Trust me, I had meetings with Warner Brothers. Um, Just storage and alone. And it was like, do you know what you're doing? And they're, little, you know, you could tell it, you look at me and I wouldn't trust me. And I'm <laughs> like, you know, we've done this a few times already. And I don't know when that, that <laughs> movie, you know, maybe that was 10 years ago, but we both had confidence. It was, we didn't, we weren't trying to convince ourselves. You knew you were going to be successful, I hope. We knew we could rally the troops around you to be successful. So it was just kind of convincing everybody else, and that's what that's what but, but, but we are we ha, we are, have the luxury of doing that. And a lot of back when digital started, a lot of independent and visionary technology adopters say, "I want to shoot this digital and not red, but whatever digital." Mm -hmm. And you talk to the studio and the studio's like, who are you? What have you done? No, thank you. We're not yeah. shooting. So it took a while for it to. Yeah. I bet the same, it's absolutely the same in aviation or in, in, absolutely. in cars. I mean, think how that, totally. that whole process, it, yeah. it, it, you know, everyone, somebody has to take a risk. And, and it's the reckless yeah. people that yeah, you usually talk about. push things forward. You know, yeah, yeah. really. It, well, it is. You have to take responsibility for it. And it, I mean, God bless those aviation people because you're like being reckless and combining things that yeah, get you killed different. is very different than yeah. Shit, we're gonna have well, to shoot another day. You don't have any humans inside the, the camera. Yeah. Tom Wolf book. Um, What's the question? Water while you're asking, oh, like, saying that. The famous Tom Wolf. Is it Tom Wolf? Tom Wolf book? The right stuff. Oh, that's yeah. it. That's such sure. a brilliant description of how of how um, God. you know, how that era of, of kind of bravery, madness yeah. got them to the moon. Yeah. I mean that The right well. stuff. You could do something with that. With what? The right stuff. Oh. It's that that's, mixture. That's a perfect example of how of how, you know, there was so much of geniuses involved in that stuff. Total bravery. At the end of the day, it's somebody pushing their own, you know, just what like What would we movie. do? Yeah. Um, why am I forgetting his name? This Sam Shepard character. 
the, 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 yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sound who, barrier. Who broke the sound barrier with a broken arm or a broken yeah. shoulder? Oh, I remember something. seeing that movie. Anyway, great book. Well, is there, you know, when you're shooting now, like when you're. That was a great story. Yeah. I mean, that's what he's saying. So when, you, when you're shooting now, is you still wishing there are other things? Are you guys, are you saying, ah, this is, I want to push it? Are you trying to push a sound barrier on the camp? Um, what I'm doing now is beginning to discover the real extent. There are do things mm. on these things I'm doing now that I wouldn't have done two years ago. Like what? Like working at exposure levels that I'd be nervous about on a big screen. Mm. And now I'm regularly shooting at 3000 airs A because I've cut that in with, you know, I was saying, for yeah. me, 1280 is good, but uh, yeah. cut, cutting that in and quite frankly, seeing no difference at all. Well, because by the time I've done what I do with Stefan and everything, we're, we're um, you know, it's so, and then that changes the style of photography and then you start, exploring with the lenses, so it's still a massive exploration, so and I've still got a long way to, to go with you've been through. Like you've been lucky enough to also have the, I, I mean, Stefan's a good relationship at Company 3, um, and you call me, you're like, you gotta come in, you gotta come in, Stefan, because you get the new chip, like we do something new, and you do your due diligence and you're testing stuff, and you're actually pushing Stefan too. I mean, this last time when we went in, and I can't even remember if that was for Guardians or what it was for, but then Stefan is calling me like, okay, what are you doing here? Because this is different than that. And everybody's kind of learning because you're pushing. Well, you're, because you were pushing, we made this new thing and we're kind of like, okay, this is pretty good. And then you push it this weird way that we never thought, oh, <laughs> not even Stefan is like, I don't understand. Oh, you know, Henry's just doing something crazy. And then we go and we all look at it and we're like, you know, sitting <laughs> that company three, like, oh, wow, you know, this is really but cool. So, so we're talking about being reckless, but we're not being re reckless because we're it's, doing, we're yes. do, do, you're do, being smart. Do, yes. No, but due, due diligence yeah. is, is very, very important. Sometimes you're just doing math. Yeah, you're not reckless. Well, you, 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 I'm testing the parameters of, yeah. so that when I'm putting myself in, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. However, you asked me what is doing different. Yeah, I'm going way beyond that now, and that's great. Totally fascinating. You did fact, some, push some stuff on the flash. Uh, some, but not not like I'm doing right now. Other way you around. Know, See, that's that, exciting. Yeah. For, that's exciting for me because I know I'll get a call. I'm going to get a call from you in yeah. a month or two months or tomorrow. Oh, so you're and being like, so I was doing this, and but that's when the magic happens. It's not us like screwing around you know tinkering yeah it's when you're like okay i pushed it too far or i pushed it to the right or to the left or down and something interesting happened and it didn't work out it bro i broke it how do we fix it that's to me well i won't do anything on on anybody's movie that, no, 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 right. that, that will yeah. that, that i don't think will work but in the prep and in the exploration phase, which you're not hazardous doing that on somebody else's on the day, but in the preparation and exploration, which you do a lot of, that's what that's the most exciting time for me. Going yeah. to visit yeah. a set and watching stuff happen is exciting for a completely different so, reason. But when you get called for camera, when the movie's being shot, it's usually a very bad. But <laughs> I read that. It's I, a bad I, phone yeah. call. I read that you and said. And we've had those. You know? Yeah, that that text serves a story. Well, completely. I mean, yeah, yeah. And uh, however, to what we were talking about before, tech has defined what stories can be told. I think now, you know, you would ask someone like uh, Doug, and you say, "Would you be shooting a movie like we've just been shooting with the Instigators? Would you be shooting that?" 10 years ago, and I think he'd say absolutely not. I'm sure he'd say that's, that was his, that's what he would have liked to have done then, but the technology wasn't there to do it. And um, so he's very aware of how the technology is serving, serving the function and serving the approach of how we go about making the movie. You know, and you have to make sure everybody's on board for that because it's, you know, all, all the teams that work together, you have to sit everybody down and say, 
this is what you normally do. Yeah. And you do that, you know, to a totally excellent standard. Are you right. interested in doing something differently? And the really interesting people always are interested in doing something different yeah. and they have to slightly relearn the way to think of doing stuff. It's amazing things get done. <laughs> like it's amazing when you think on the really, when you're around a lot of really talented people yeah. that are visionaries and you have so much vision and so many ideas that come together to make something. Yeah. It's amazing. But, but you know, the, on the one hand, this stuff, you, you might be, you might think, oh, this is threatening my work. If you were in the grit department, you think, oh, no, no, I haven't, I had to build stuff. The truth is, mm. it's completely expanded that world because you can be so inventive about how you In fact, interesting, Absolutely. you know, if you think about the history of gripping, they, yeah. you were totally. it started by them being on yeah. ships, on tall ships and ropes and stuff, yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. went to the theatres and stuff. <laughs> My favourite stuff. That's how it happens. true. But now, this suddenly, that world of inventiveness has come back. Mm. And oh, absolutely. You remember when before we started, there was a handful of companies making grip and accessories and stuff to go around the camera. A handful. Lenses. I mean, the whole system. Now that these cameras exist, there's a whole industry. Right? There's well, yeah, amazing. And, and these new ideas. You have new ideas yeah, yeah. that come up you know, from the weirdest places and new companies forming every month, it seems, with great ideas because now you have, this opens up the world to, on the making stuff side, you have an audience, you have a customer base, you can actually make that real. And that's what's exciting. We, we, we have one of the brilliant assistants who works with us in, in Atlanta now, has his own CNC machine. And he's making, <laughs> making, making stuff. stuff. Yeah, I know. He'll, he'll go yeah. home. Tim will give, give him a challenge. He'll go home at night, and next morning, this prototype bit will come in, which will have solved a problem that came out. It's fantastic. Oh yeah, there's. I I was on uh, Rebel Moon, Zack Snyder's movie, and um, they had a 3D printer on the camera truck, and they were just wow. printing out but what, parts and stuff, and yeah, it's like, so wow, cool. what a great time to it's, be It's exactly. So when you're, so you've just been shooting how many months in a row, just two years or something? Probably longer. So how now. do you shift your mind? You're gonna go home, you're gonna have some time. How long will it take before you start tinkering and thinking? And well, when your brain goes in the camera again? Well, it's always project driven. Sure. So the hard thing, I think particularly the hard thing in filmmaking is to park the last movie and say, that was that movie. Okay. And the very hard thing to do is to say, this movie, and even especially when you're working with the same director or whatever, yeah. say, that was that movie, and now we're going to look at this movie. This is a different story, and you'd start with a clean sheet of paper. Okay. And we're all guilty of thinking, well, that's how we did the last movie, so then we'll just roll into the next movie. Yeah. And that's... That's not good. Interesting. That's not interesting. You have to start yeah. from a clean sheet of paper. Wonderful. And what gives you that? Does that. time kind of? No, it's discipline. Discipline. Thinking, that dis is it's discipline. mental discipline of making yourself saying, park that idea there and, and work with the director and talk about what the idea is. And it, that's the hardest bit to make it. The making the movie is, is making the movie. It's easy. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's, Hard. it's problem solving. Yeah. The hardest bit is working out what the idea is. Taking those risks and, and sometimes that trusting doesn't... your judgment. Well, it's, it's working out what the idea is, and sometimes you know you don't. It takes a while to get there, and sometimes, you know, in, in Suicide Squad, it, I was in Panama, and I was yeah. just trying to define what it is that we were talking about. So I took took a camera with me, just like this, and just started shooting some stuff, because it was an expressive way of finding it. And in that, that was the process of visual development. Mm. And then I, I literally sort of cut together this little sequence. And that was helpful for everybody because they thought, OK, well, that's, yeah. that's what we might be talking about, but that's what we're, we're actually talking about. And then that defined, you know, that helped feed back into production design and how we're using colour. All that kind of stuff. was so good on that movie, too. It was fantastic. It really Beth, was. Beth, yeah, yeah, Beth yeah. is really, really, really talented. The actors just ate it up. Yeah, but yeah. You, you, it starts by us 
all being open-minded. Is it, is it enjoyable for you now to kind of get to work with these directors that you have this rapport with, you kind of... I love working with everybody. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you, lucky to work with really interesting people, but, yeah. you know, movie making is a really exciting thing to do because you get to work with some wonderful people. We're all kind of dysfunctional in one way or another. <laughs> it's it's tap, tapping into a healthy blend it's of it's it's tapping into our dysfunction. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's why I say it's amazing that, you know, it all comes together because it's, but the payoff is worth it too. when you do something special too. Even yeah. the little things, the little special moments yeah. are so incredible. And that, you know, especially the new stuff. I'm excited for the new stuff all the time. I can't wait to see what you do next. And we are so happy you joined us. Thank you for hanging out with us, well, fun. for sharing everything. Sure, absolutely. Are you, you going to go home for a while? Yes. Okay. Onto the Relax. Farm. Get out of New work, York. Work Can't with the hand. green, be outside, maybe not on a film set for a while. Make some coffee. We've got some, coffee, some coffee to talk about. We've got some coffee to talk about. Yep. We've got Absolutely. some we do. Perfect. fields to plow. Well, yes, we do. Be, I'm sure you guys will be talking whatever the next thing oh, is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We already, we're already cooking on something. Already. Yeah, I know. I had Literally. to interrupt you guys to Literally. get this whole conversation started. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Henry. Well done. Cheers. Thanks, man. This is yeah. awesome. Amazing. Amazing. That's, that's the Stormtrooper camera. Those are our prototype cameras. White. So we make them white. They're stormtroopers, but we, they're not really stormtroopers because we can't call them stormtroopers, but those are the prototype run of cameras we do, send them out into the world, people bang on them, test them, and then we what's get this the feedback. one called? That's the Komodo X. Komodo X. You know that thing where you, you went through things calling weapons, and you know we have this camera that we use as a finder, and yeah. Yeah, 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 somebody. I don't know where it came from, but somebody you said, "Well, it, it looks like a bomb." Yeah. So no, it's, bomb EVF. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's fun to go through customs with bombs and weapons. The, 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 the bomb became the thing, and now yeah. everybody says, "Where's the bomb?" There you go. Great. Thank you. Moto X. We're gonna put this on your next thing because it's awesome. Hills, yeah. All right. All right. There's there's the man that needs to. Bum bum bum. Yeah, there's a man that needs to test it. Put it in his hand. Thank you. I didn't have to look test, at my notes test, at all. Test. You guys are brilliant.